Well, we're here to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Ohio Star Ball and the man that has made this all possible, Sam Sedano. Uh, first, I'd like to say congratulations for Thank winning you. the Icon Award and uh, what a, what a well-deserved accolade. Uh, how did it feel? Terrible. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I use this word. I, I never did what I did in my career to get all these awards. I mean, they were just something that was a, a bonus from my peers. From, I mean, if I, I never worked to get these Lifetime Achievement Awards, this Hall of Fame award, this award, that award. To me, that was given to me from my, my peers. It was... It was a, an extra bonus for me to get these because uh, I, I, I guess they felt I, you know, accomplished a lot of things in the business. I mean, I never did these things to, that was, it was never focused on me. But that's the reason you're also given the award is because you have given back it's, to yeah, the people. Right. It's, it's to the people. Yes. I always said it. If you don't like people, you shouldn't be in this business. Because I'm a people's person, yeah. and uh, I, I like to talk to people. People keep saying to me, why do you keep judging and going to competitions? I said, because I like to be around people, you know, because the, the, they, they bring a certain element in me out that is yeah. not, you know, their, well, they brought it out, so that is there all the time now. Someone <laughs> said to me this weekend, you're always happy. Well, no, they don't catch me when I'm not. <laughs> Um, I think it was Linda Dean that spoke last night at the Icon Awards, mm -hmm. and she mentioned uh, how you touch people from the newcomer to the pro uh, with your spontaneous uh, just encouragement. Uh, you're always telling people, dance to the next level. Yes, go for the next goal. And uh, the pros also brought up last night, and I know for myself this was absolutely true, that Ohio Star Ball was where you wanted to be. USDC was secondary to going to Ohio and competing. And the chance to be on TV and the chance to win Ohio Star Ball on television was just such an opportunity and such a thrill and it made many careers. And tell us a little bit about, let's go back in time, and how Ohio Star Ball started because it was a one day event with a different name, isn't that correct? Right, it was called the Dance of Star Ball. And I never, well, we, Chuck Bannister and I started this competition. We never started this competition to compete against other competitions. I never wanted it to be the biggest, the best, the most entries is this, the that. We just did it out of the love of dancing. And like I always say in the beginning, Chuck and I just started because we want to have a big get together, a big party. And it started out as one day. Uh... In 1985, when I got the phone call for it to be televised on PBS, um, I couldn't resist the offer. And I said, but I didn't think that, this, that it was going to... Well, how do you know what, what your competition is going to develop into? I thought I knew TV would be very good because it was going to be brought into people's their homes and uh, they might want to come and, come and see the event. But... Um, but just the exposure nationwide, yeah, the, the, the it was exposure. hard to realize but the, what that But did. Ohio was, I, for me, my focus was never, ever to be better than USBC, to be better than this one. To, at that time, was the Imperial competitions, yes. to be better than... All, you know, all I did was ran a, a su successful comp, what I thought would be successful. Yes. Okay? Again, like I said about choreography... Doing your own choreography, no one does it better than yourself. That's true. When you're running a competition, luckily I had the wisdom of, of knowing how to run a competition. Mm -hmm. uh, awareness of people's names. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where that came from. but mm -hmm. and, and just the, uh, the personality to want to be around people. Didn't, you know, and, and talk and, and I guess that you could say that was my Arthur Murray training. Well, back in the day when you performed in the Catskills, I 
heard that people followed you around from room to room. You had different ballrooms in different oh, places. Yeah, yeah. And like a Pied Piper because they just had to see what Sodana the showman was going well, to do. And well, you took yeah. that. You took those showmanship skills to Ohio. And you developed a lot of different, not only entertainment things, but competitions. But let's start with the entertainment. Tell us about the banner parade. I think it got out of hand at one point, but this is well, they were. They, I had this idea that I created that I wanted every school to come in with a banner and we would have picked the best banner. And then after a few years, when they started bringing floats <laughs> in and couldn't get through the door, I said... And then it was taking more than an hour. Of course. I said, that's it. It became Mardi Gras. Because as the comp got bigger, <laughs> the time got less. And sure. For the, but it was fun. The yes. banners. See, all this stuff in the beginning were, were fun. And that's what, that's what I really think made Ohio successful. Because these other competitions weren't doing this. They you made were, it fun for the pro-amps. Yeah, they weren't, they weren't doing the pad. They weren't doing the team matches. Yes. Uh, Balloons over the floor. I mean, and the, I was always trying to be creative. And, the, and these other comps weren't doing that. Tell us about the neon sign, because that was kind of a... Uh, well, I got excited. You know, it was, it was in 1985. Okay. And... Uh, I remember you saying you felt like Ohio had arrived, because it was just... There was that emblem of it in neon. Yeah. And like I said, I never saw a neon sign in a competition. Yes. yes. You know, and but, but well, after that, yeah, neon signs did pop up all over the place. Sure. But uh, I don't know. I have no idea what made me be want to do a neon sign at that. At well, that I time. think you're a person who's challenged yourself all your life in every aspect. I of think I like to be the first, the original. Well, see, there you, you know, go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I don't like to copy anyone's. Uh, thoughts or ideas or mm -hmm. I want to be me. Tell us also a little bit, you started in an, uh, a smaller hotels and then you had your eye on the prize, which was the Regency Ballroom. Well, I, we, I, we started the first competition in a half of the size of the room we're in now at the Hyatt. Okay. Okay, because... Uh, that's all we could. But the very first competition were like in the Marmada Inn and uh, different hotels throughout the years before you got well, to the we Regency. Well, we the Marriott, and that's where we outgrew it when, okay. when, when you couldn't even get through the door. Okay. And uh, that's when I, when I couldn't get in. I tried to get in on Saturday night to see the show, and it was, believe it or not, I, I had oh a difficult... Oh, my goodness. Well, they moved for me, but it was, yes. I didn't like that feeling, and that's when I knew we had to move. Plus, the hotel only had 250 rooms. Was it scary then going from the Regency to the convention center? Was that just like a big leap? Well, Patel Hall was a big leap because I never thought we could fill that. But, you know, it was funny how everything has just evolved into Friday and Saturday night. Now we're in Patel Hall and we're able to get some sort of audience yes. for Friday night and Saturday night. Um, I never, because John Kimmons was the first one who said, I think you should move into Patel Hall for your big nights. And I said, I can't fill that hall. Mm. He said, well, try. I said, but I can't, you know. <laughs> and that's when I came up with the college idea. Yes. Okay, to, uh, and then I fell in love with the college idea. Not just so that they, they would bring the numbers, but I love the energy and the youth and, and, and the the carefree attitude. Is it like 47 universities and colleges? Yeah, 48, 900 wow. kids. And um, I just love giving to the... Yes. So they are <clears throat> um, in the lower level for their right. competition, but they're allowed to come on Friday and Saturday evening to, attend the, to attend the performances. Right. So it's wonderful them, for them to be exposed to the yeah, pro Yeah, and that's what they say. They like to come and watch the pros. And at that time, to see the pros that they had watched on TV. Yes. You know. Um, so that's, and that's how that got started because they, they filled the room. They really helped fill the room. And this year on Friday and Saturday night, you're having uh, the timeless performances. Oh, Tell yeah, us timeless. a little bit about that for your 40th. Well, I don't even know how I came up with that idea, <laughs> but I thought in the 40th year, I'm going to invite, if they would, because mm -hmm. now you're talking about people who haven't been performing, still coaching and teaching. Sure. Uh, 
to come and perform. Yes. And uh, who made Ohio what it is today. Of course. All right. So I asked those people, mm -hmm. uh, invited them to, to come and perform mm -hmm. and uh, be honored. Mm hmm because yeah. they were the people who brought Ohio where it is today, yeah. and it's blossomed into this. It seems like no matter what I do with Ohio Star Ball, it <laughs> always turns out to be, thank God, a positive thing. Uh, I think you have some other new events happening this year. The Fordney Foundation is having their participation also in the World uh, Dance Sports Well, the series. other thing that we, 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 we started was the best of the best, Okay. and that's taken off. And then Bill Sparks wanted the best of the best for the kids. And that seems to have taken off. So, <clears throat> like I said, whenever it comes to Ohio, mm -hmm. and then I added an open event on Friday, which I never, ever, ever had open events in Ohio. Okay. But since I had an extra room on an extra day, uh -huh. I said, well, why don't I Friday night, just for the American style, Rhythm and Smooth, have open events for the Pro-Ams. Wonderful. And that seems, I don't know what the entries are there, but it's... It, it seems to be. Well, you're always seeming to evolve and engage, uh, in particular, the pro-am students. You're really giving them a multifaceted opportunities and ways to compete and improve their dancing. And uh, I just think it's fabulous. You're known as one of the biggest pro-am comps in the United States. Well, I do understand when I talk to some students, you know, they, there are certain competitions that, that are not for them, like the big competitions, okay. they feel just overwhelmed, overwhelmed. And, and, and I tell them, I said, well, I said, you know, this is a very, the big, the bigger competitions, cause I'm not the biggest. There's other big ones too, that they're, you know, they're not the most, they're very challenging, mm -hmm. you know, and if you're, but I said, every comp is different. Yes. You don't know who you're dancing against. I mean, like people come to Ohio and they they say in some of the categories, well, we thought we were going to get more people. I said, well, that was the what it drew this year. Last yes. year it was bigger. So every, every year it's different. It's, um, but it is a very challenging comp. And because, well, I would say all the big comps get the same high-profile pro-ams. Because they want to be competitive. Because they want to be competitive. Uh, the, the, the serious-minded ones. Yes. Uh, but that's not the success of a, of a competition. No, it encompasses everything. And it I think yes, it encompasses um, the socially. Yes, newcomers. The newcomers. But, you know, it's become such a competitive world now. You know, the makeup, the hair, the, the dresses, the, the coaching of people coming in. When I used to teach Pro-Am in the 60s, I never took a coaching lesson. I didn't even know what that... <laughs> What, what, what that meant, coaching lesson. I was the teacher. Well, all the, my the industry have, has grown oh, in all directions. Oh, just so. like the dancing has. That's right. Just like the structure has yes. grown into what we're doing in the American rhythm now. It has to grow. Or it, it's, yes. <clears throat> but, it, I mean, in the Ohio Star Ball, we used to have one shoe person. <laughs> one dress person. How many vendors are there this year? Oh, God. 30? 10 dress vendors? Three shoe people. I mean, it just goes on and on. It's just... Well, and tell us a little bit about how you give back. You have the top studio, top teacher, top student awards. And top rising star top teacher. Rising. Because it, I started with the top rising star teacher because mm -hmm. usually they don't get the credit. Only the high profile yes. pro-am teachers do. But this, this gives credit, recognition to the people who wouldn't be getting it. Yes. It's the rising star, in my opinion... I even started the Rising Star for the Pro-Am events. Mm. It's not what it is today. It's become Pro-Am Rising Star single dances. Mine is Pro-Am multi-dance for couples who never placed in, in the final. In the top, in the final. Yes. So they're the Rising Stars. Yes. But as you know, you know, organizers have the right to take someone else's idea and develop it, put it what they feel is going to bring them more. And so now there's Rising Star everything. Rising Star Newcomer, Rising Star Intermediate Bronze, Rising Star Full Bronze, Rising Star Everything. Well, it offers an opportunity for everyone to have a chance to shine and just feel they have a moment in the sun. Well, it has the opportunity for a teacher to do more entries. That's true, too. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you, you've had some beautiful mission statements that are synonymous with Ohio Star Ball. Uh, tell us the one that we all know about friends we have not yet met. 
Do you know Let me my see heart? if I can remember that these years have gone by. There are no strangers at the O'Hara Star Bowl, only friends we have not yet met. To me, that embodies the feeling of Ohio because it's coming, they always say it trickles down from the top and you're such a friendly person and you make it your, you know, it's your naturalness to make it, everybody feel that they are seen and they are known and you know their name and you know what event they're in. So it is this sense of just community and friendliness. And how did you come up with that statement? Do you remember? Oh yeah, I remember it. Oh, tell, tell me. <laughs> it was a logo at a hotel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you stole it. <laughs> yeah, it was right over the registration. And I said, boy, does that fit me well. It does. It, it does. But, you know, th 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 I'm always looking for things that are new phrases. Yes. And d just different things. It's, it's hard to you know, be creative uh, every year. One of your other slogans, Sam, is bringing it all together. Uh, tell us what you mean by that. Well, bringing it all all together is a great phrase for the Ohio Star Ball. Yes, it is. It is because I started with the the collegiate, another form of, of, of audience. Mm -hmm. uh, my goal was to get more form of audiences. Mm -hmm. You know, so there are a lot of rooms at the, the, the convention center. One room is for the collegiate, one room for another form of dancing, one room for an another form of dancing. <clears throat> but the collegiate right now is the, the one I'm working on. Okay, because okay, I feel this is where a lot of dancing is going to come out of the youth. You know, they, they, all these universities have dance teams, dance clubs, and you don't know what future teachers you have, what future mm -hmm. competitors you have in these schools. Some of them go on. Some of them don't, but the college to me is the future of the future and another form of uh, audience. Then you have the best of the best, which you created, which I created, and it involves 40 competitions. And in order to qualify to dance the, your best of the best in Ohio, you have to win your division at one of these comps. Ah, and the finale is in and Ohio. the finale is in Ohio when. Uh, ballroom competitions first began, it was all solos. And right. now that's a very special opportunity. Tell us how that uh, plays out for the best of the best. Well, if you win, win one of the Pro-Am best of the best at one of the hosting competitions, okay. you get to go to Ohio and do a minute and 30 second solo routine and very, represent the competition that you won it at. That's very special. Right. Yes. So they will say, Rep Joe Smith and whatever are representing uh, some competition, mm -hmm. and they won the Latin bronze. So Now, how are you finding time for all that? Well, there's 70 <laughs> of them, and that's the, that's the miracle we're going to have to pull. <laughs> it's between the bronze, the silver, the gold, and the we added a show dance. There's wow. over 70 solos. Wow. So we're going to, yeah, that's a good question. I won't know that until we start <laughs> doing the schedule. Then we created the World Pro-Am Dance Board Series, mm -hmm. which Ohio is the finale. Yes. Okay, and that <clears throat> is over 90 competitions a year. Wow. And you have to qualify for points. The points are usually how well you do at these comps. And we have a, a website where people can go and, and look at where they stand, teacher-wise, student-wise. And then we have the, the Fordney Foundation, which is uh, sponsored by Marilyn Fordney Havasi. And A.K.A. Winky. Yes. Yeah, A.K.A. Yeah. Winky. <laughs> <clears throat> and she sponsors it. And it's, again, a qualification at certain competitions that you have to go to and receive points. And, again, Ohio is the finale. See, I'm, in, I'm very big into incentives that... Because, you, know, you know, after a while you go to competitions, you go to competitions, they, sometimes it means nothing. But when you have in incentives, like when you go to comps and you gather points, you know, just, and plus, Ohio is a member of the USDC circuit, mm -hmm. the Dancers Cup Tour circuit, the Global circuit, the World Prime Dance Sports circuit. 
So there's a, there's a lot of circuits out there where they're, they have <clears throat> incentives to gather points. Yes. And Ohio is the finale, like I said, for the best of the best, the Fordney Foundation, the World Pro-Am Dance Sports Series. And people work all year long. All year long for this. Yes. So the teachers have an incentive. Yes, of course. Uh, it means, well, the saying with the World Pro-Am Dance Sports Series are rewards through increased activities. Ah, okay. Okay, so it rewards through increased activities. The more activities you do, the more rewards you reap. Not only are they going to get points for the World Pro-Am Dance Sports Series, but what, they're at the event, at a, a, one of these events that they're gathering these points for, they can win the honor, top honors at, at that event also. So back to that mission statement, you have a, a new slogan for this year. Tell us about that. It's the 40 years and... Oh, 40 years with only one purpose in mind, you. And what made you come up with that one? Did you see that at a restaurant too? No. On a menu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, it was uh, uh, Gary Brown who brought this up. Hmm. Only one purpose in mind, you. And I thought, that, is, mm -hmm. that says it all. Yes. That's very, because it's always been that way. Mm -hmm. One purpose in mind, you. I'll never forget at one competition where the school was dancing on Sunday and they might have missed their plane. And I had, oh, I remember, remember I told you this? Yes. And I had <clears throat> this bus waiting because they brought a, quite a few people, the shuttle bus from the hotel ready waiting outside for them to take them to the, no, I didn't have to do that. No. You know, but. But people come to an event to dance and you understand that. It's not just running an event. Well, the thing I, I, you can't make everyone a winner. All right. I learned that a long time ago. Yes. Okay. People are going to lose. There's nothing I can do about that. And I always wanted for, when a person left their house to come to a house, of all, like to be, make it as convenient as possible. I always didn't like them to have the bad weather. When we used to get bad weather and they, their planes were late or they missed their heats, that used to bother me. Now, there's nothing you can do about that. You can't change the weather. No. You can't change the weather. <laughs> a lot of things I could not But what do. you could do is supply But what I a could do experience. is that once they got to the hotel is to have a weld oil machine, like they say it. Yes. Run your competition on time and listen. Mm. Listen, mm -hmm. organizers. Listen to what people are saying. Mm -hmm. Don't schluff it off. You know, when someone says something, like, a lot of ideas happen, these senior events that, that I have, mm -hmm. all right? I, I started that a long time ago because I listened. People mm -hmm. wanted to dance against people their, really, their their, you know, their own age from 60 and up or 70 and up. And you, gotta, you just have to listen to people. They'll let you know. If they, they say it in a nice way, which they always do, mm -hmm. and if they want certain events... I'll tell them right there, you got it, because I know I can do it. You also have a very exciting addition to this year's celebration. Linda Etter is coming, and uh, tell oh, us a little bit about her. Oh, you're one of my her. favorite Broadway singers. Mm -hmm. I saw her, uh, Linda Etter. I mm -hmm. first saw her from uh, Dr. Jekyll and then Scarlet Pimper. Scarlet Pimpernel and Jekyll Pimpernel, and Hyde, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, she's great. And so when I was told they were trying to get her, and then when I was told they got her, I said, how did you manage to get that? Yes. Because yes. she's singing on Friday and Saturday night, three songs each, and some of the couples are dancing to her music. I think this is just another, for the 40th anniversary. Very special edition. Very special. I haven't heard Broadway singers at a competition. Right. Or any singers at a competition. And the dancers dancing to her as an entertainment wife. Yes. I'm interested in seeing how this yes. goes, too. Yes. Well, anything else you'd like to tell us about the 40th celebration? Um, you think it was, was going to go for another? It was quite a journey. Yes. <laughs> well, it might go another 40, but not with me here. But <laughs> uh, it was quite a journey. It was a very successful journey. It made me a good living, a good life. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I met many, many, many people. Sure. Many friends. Uh, 
No, it's been, it's been very good to me. The dancing's been very good to me. Yes. It keeps my mind busy. Mm -hmm. uh, keeps me around young, old, around music that I love to hear and dance to. Mm -hmm. So it's been nothing but a great journey. And if I had to do it again, I over again, I would. But uh, so now your, it's, your one day event, your little baby has grown up. To this. <laughs> now on to the future where yes. the youngies have to, the That's younger right. generation, I hope, follow in these footsteps and see I never thought of this as a business or making money mm -hmm. when I when I first started it wasn't that so well I think there's a oh, I don't know a saying that if you seek fame and fortune uh, it doesn't always come to you but those who give to other people it may come just because it's a positive outflowing of, of what you've done for the dance community. And honestly, I can say I was at the Icon Award last night that everyone who spoke reiterated uh, a lot of us wouldn't have the careers we had and the exposure we had and the community of ballroom dancing would not have developed to the degree it has without pioneers like Sam Sedano. Uh, so thank you very much for basically sharing your, your goals and your aspirations through Ohio Star Ball with uh, all the ballroom dancers who are eternally grateful for your... Well, thank you. So if someone wants to attend the Ohio Star Ball this year, tell us what date it starts. It starts November 14th, Tuesday, and it ends Sunday, November 19th. And you better get your entry forms in soon. That's right. <laughs> so be there. Mm -hmm.